Social change and systems change tend to go hand in hand. As a journalist, I've seen again and again that social movements are most effective when they give people not just the permission, but the means to transform their reality. In the summer of 2019, I came to Spain to learn how two of the regions most brutally repressed under the 36-year dictatorship of Francisco Franco built the world's largest worker-owned co-ops. How did their community-based model of business help them resist and survive under dictatorship? And how do co-ops and cooperation function today? The Mondragon Federation of the Basque region was founded in 1956. Today, it's Spain's 10th largest business with well over 80,000 employees and yet more overseas. American Fred Freundlich came to Mondragon 25 years ago to study the social impact of worker-owned businesses. Today, he's a professor at Mondragon University, a university funded by the Federation. In the early years, the history of Mondragon, its beginnings, uh, go back to the period in Spain right after the Spanish Civil War, which was 1936 to 39. So the Basque Country had sided against the dictator Franco who won the war. Franco's government designated it as occupied enemy territory. The rest of the world was involved in the Second World War, so no one was paying attention to desperate situation in Spain or in the Basque Country in particular, characterized by destruction from the war, polarized society, political repression, dictatorship. When into this situation comes a priest, Arismendi Arrieta, and he had a sort of a, a broad vision for social change based on Catholic social doctrine, which is not about preparing oneself for the next life, but creating God's kingdom on earth, so to speak. So he had this vision based on human dignity, everyone should have sort of a minimally decent standard of living, solidarity, people should take care of each other, share when necessary, mutual and individual responsibility, hard work, and he decided, he came to the conclusion after working on, on, this, on this vision in reality in the community, on the ground for, for many years, that these, this vision need, needed to be taken into the economy, into, the, into businesses. So business became viewed for a generation or more as a place for progressive people to express their values. It's not enough on its own as a response to fascism or authoritarianism anywhere, but it's a significant part. Now we're talking about 98 to 110 or so cooperative organizations almost all of them worker cooperatives, where the people who work in the enterprise are the members and the owners. They employ 74,000 people, roughly, all over the world. Fred and I are not the only Americans drawn to the Basque country to learn about worker-owned co-ops and their potential to transform society. My trip to Spain coincides with a delegation led by the Democracy Collaborative and California's Beneficial State Bank. They're both U.S. groups dedicated to building new economic systems in the U.S. Democracy Collaborative Executive Vice President Marjorie Kelly speaks with Mikel Lizamiz at Ulma Packaging Cooperative about how co-ops are different and how they run. It's a co-op formed by 1,600 people, workers. So this is the, the meeting idea in, in the workshop. All these uh, workers are the members, most of them, and uh, all the money, all the assets that we can see here belongs to the workers. Mondragon's worker-owned co-ops aren't limited to manufacturing. Following the death of Franco, Basques began to establish media organizations that worked in their own language, which had been banned under the dictatorship. Aito Lagoma of the Goena Media Cooperative explained that it was second nature to found new publications in channels as worker-owned businesses. We started, I have to go to 70s or before, when Franco dies and in 80s, we, we need a Basque language the medias and production and all the things because we don't have anything. We just have a, a TV, national TV. People uh, from in Narasate, for example, was the first magazine in Basque language. After start different in different towns around, like uh, Basque magazines. So we decided to put them together and make a bigger and a stronger magazine in Basque language. It was a good improvement for them to 
to read in Basque and understand and things like that. Maybe for us it was quite easy or natural thing that in 2000 when we start with this project, make it like cooperative. I'm not gonna say like a tradition, but it's like something that we understand mm -hmm. that if we own and we work better mm -hmm. and we can maybe stronger.